Hello hockey fans and welcome into the Wayne Gretzky Sportsplex. I'm Scott Bridge along with Ken Hornick and tonight the Cambridge Winterhawks travel into Brantford to take on a team that's young, that's aggressive, that's learning, but uh, so far this year a lot of learning curves and you know what, they just have to take it one game at a time. Well yeah, so definitely the uh, the Brantford team young and learning and the Cambridge team is a little bit disappointing too because they're, they've lost 15 games and I know coaching staff thinks the team should have a better record so they said with their experience, the veterans, they're going to look for a real strong last month of the season here for them and it's going to be an interesting hockey game as we got a real young team against a real experienced team. Now, Ken, you were a uh, scout for the Barry Colts, and um, so I mean, some of the some of the young guys that here uh, that uh, are getting experience. Who do you see shining here tonight? Well, fortunately for me tonight, uh, I get to watch a kid named uh, Zach Magwood. He'll wear number 10 for Cambridge. He's a 98-born player who will probably go in the top three rounds of the OHL draft. The knock on him is his size. If you're familiar with Travis Konechny, he's a poor man's Travis Konechny. So we'll see what he can do tonight. This is his first game he's actually played up for minor midgets. So it'll be interesting to see how Zach plays. Watch out for him tonight, number 10 for Cambridge. And out of the four times they've played this year, Brantford has taken a victory once. And we know that's in the back of Cambridge's mind, but uh, here on the big ice surface, what is it they have to do? They, they, they know they're playing a team that's at the bottom of the league here in the Midwestern Conference. How do you not take them lightly? Well, I, I think when you are a better team, you sometimes take the other team lightly. The key is for Brantford to stay in the game is to make it really close in the first. If, if it gets out of control in the first, then Cambridge will probably rack up some, uh, probably more than six or seven goals. But I expect the Brantford coach, Scott Rex, to have his boys ready to play here tonight. And Ken and myself will be back with the puck drop on Rogers TV right after this. Well, good evening and welcome to Rogers TV as we present to you the play-by-play -play of tonight's Greater Ontario Junior Hockey League game between the hometown Brantford 99ers and the visiting Cambridge Hawks. Ken Hornick and Scott Bridge in the broadcast booth tonight. A young team and an experienced team going at it tonight. What kind of game do you expect here this evening? Well, I expect both teams to come out all guns a-blazing. Cambridge on the road so far this year. Not a bad record, just one game above 500 at 10-9-1. And, and Cambridge in their last uh, eight or at last 10 games actually have not been too bad at all. So they can't take Brantford lightly, and you know that Brantford on home ice definitely has a little bit of advantage going. Right off the face off, the Hawks take control in behind his own net there. That's the big defenseman, Lucas Zitmanis. They play the puck up the left wing. Mills now fires it ahead. Broken up the line by the 99ers defenseman and comes out through center. Inside the Cambridge blue line. Just offside there on the far side was the big winger, Paris Briscoe. And we get our first stoppage of the game. Just 24 seconds in, an offside called against the Brantford 99ers. Well, Brantford just four wins at home this season. But talking to head coach Scott Rex before the game, he's quite confident that this young is going to learn from their mistakes and they're only going to get better with time. Once again, the face-off controlled by Cambridge. They'll bring another own zone. Long pass up to the middle. Went by everybody and this will be an icing call here and two quick stoppages of play as this game is only 40 seconds old. Nobody's yet to score. Yeah, you know what? Just a little bit of a stop and go so far. In that long lead pass right there through the neutral zone didn't quite work they're going to want to tighten up a little bit on the offense maybe try those short passes through the neutral zone see if that works instead of the long lead passes Cambridge off the draw get the puck and fire it off the backboards comes out in the corner now Polilo will pick it up for Brantford and come back the other way Polilo feeds it across to Ney Ney then swings it left side for Bast in his weak backhander handled easily by the goaltender Huck puck in behind the Cambridge net here's Grattan for Cambridge with the puck Fasting all over him. Puck bounces right to Polilo and a glove pass called here against the 99ers. And Ken, you and I were talking about Bastian before the hockey game here this evening and uh, what a great future he has for him. Yeah, he'll be uh, playing with the Mississauga Steelheads next year as a regular. In fact, he's played a few games this year and I had a chance to watch him play in those two games and he was pretty darn good for a young man who played in the, at this level most of the year. And he grew about four inches the last year and he's one of the biggest center in the Ontario Hockey League next year. Cambridge fire the puck down the ice and we get another stoppage of play. Lots of whistles here early on at the 
Wayne Gretzky Sports Center in Brantford, Ontario. Yeah, and Cambridge doing a good job in the face-off dot so far. If they can control these face-offs deep down in the defensive zone, if they can clean up that breakout play, you should see them be a little bit more effective here this evening. Here's Subban with the puck. Back though, Subban swings it up to the wing, off a of skate and out to center. Story for Brantford lost the puck. Shot deep in the zone by Cambridge and they'll race after it. Story will get back there first for Brantford. Swings it up the left wing boards. Knocked down there by the winger Zeminko, but he couldn't get the puck out. It's loose. Cambridge picks it up but couldn't get a shot away. Loose puck at the blue line. Still in the zone, now tapped out through center, hit the lines, and we're going to get our first penalty of the contest, a high sticking call coming up here. Yes, yeah, Story will be going to the box for two minutes or less. And so far this year on the power play, Cambridge sits at 15.4%. That's 21st best in the league. And you know that their power play, they'll be working it along the point. You see Grattan and Subban at the point, both quick defenders. You know that Subban's been learning lots this year. Has to keep it simple back there, number three in white, though. You can't be uh, dangling at the blue line. You got to keep it simple, get pucks on net. Here's Gratton, he plays center, but he plays the point on the power play. Shot down in the corner. They battle for it, now in behind the net. Bottagoni with it. Number 22, back to Subban, he tees it up. No, he fakes it, swings it across to Gratton. Gratton goes cross ice, quick shot there by Bottagoni. And it uh, didn't make it onto the net, but the goaltender came across and got his right skate on the net and knocked it off. So we'll get a stoppage of play. Face off will remain deep in Brantford zone. And play like that, you always see goaltenders once in a while try to kick the net off its moorings. I don't think he meant to do that right there. More of an accidental play, but it does give his team a stoppage in play in an all-important faceoff, which Brantford did, did win and then cleared down the length of the ice. Cody Gratton sets it up. 40 seconds gone on the power play. Michaelis now down the left wing boards for Cambridge. Michaelis now in behind the net, still has it. Hit a stick and the puck is loosed. Knocked there by Pinder. Pinder plays it in behind the net. Centering pass out of the reach. And it's shot down the ice. Good penalty kill here by the 99ers. A minute gone. 17.05 left in the first period. No score. You're enjoying the GOJHL on Rogers. Here's a quick shot shorthanded by the big winger Paris Briscoe. He shot it over that was dislodged. And the faceoff will remain in the Cambridge zone. Yeah, good job by the Brantford 99ers to keep that in the offensive zone at the blue line. Quick shot on that rebound. Darren Huck, the goaltender for Cambridge, got across, kicked the net off, but they came oh so close. Brantford did the scoring a shorthanded goal. And so far this year, two home shorthanded goals for the 99ers looking for their third right there. Lamont Tang swings it over to Possen. Possen fires it around the boards, comes back in the point for Mills. Mills sets it up on the power play. Gives it there to Possen. Back to Mills. He lets a hard drive go right on. And the goaltender, Kiri, makes a good save to keep this a scoreless hockey game. Yeah, Kiri's done a good job for Brantford so far on the penalty kill. And Cambridge has, oh, so many lightning gunning forwards that they can put back. There's the quarterback. I know that Scott Pawson from the Listowel Cyclones played the quarterback a lot on their power play. And he gets a chance to, to be on the forward line here. But just like Grattan plays the quarterback on the power play. And when you have options like that, it just makes you that much more dominant. Here's Mills now for Cambridge. Feeds it into Pawson, he lost it. Chance to clear, and they do. In fact, they cleared it a little too high, and it goes over the uh, boards. No penalty there, I don't think. No, no penalty there, just because it went over the bench and not over the glass. So, Brantford gets away with one right there. 10 seconds left to kill on this penalty. And Story will be back on the ice, and there'll be five on five hockey once again. Nathan Bastian, the assistant captain for Brantford, takes the draw and wins it, but the puck is loose. Now Bastian with a chance to get it out. He flips it out to center. Palillo goes after it for Brantford. Getting there first, though, is Zitmanis. Plays it off the boards, out to center. Back to the Hawks. At the line, the puck came loose. Bastian flips it up the boards for Palillo. Palillo overskates it. Loose puck now scooped up by Moggy. Moggy to the line and in. Quick shot, wide of the far side. Bounces off the boards. Right to Peters. He fires one around the boards. Brant for the chance to clear. They come out to center. Story is ahead. Polilo. Bastian overskated that. Polilo picks it up. Here's a chance for Polilo. Let's a shot go. Didn't get much on it. In behind the net there for Cambridge. Matt Pinder. The puck up. Slapped right back in by Zemenko. 
Here's Bastian to Polilo, right wing corner. Has the puck, plays it down in the corner for Bastian. He's being checked closer there by Guido. Centering pass. And Polilo got a shot away but missed the net. Back on the point now. Zamenko plays it down in the corner to Bastian. Bastian swings it back to the point. Play broken up and the Hawks come back the other way. Moggy through center. Down the left side now. He'll look to shoot. Snaps one. Missed the net by four feet. Bounces out to the blue line. In fact, it bounces into center and a penalty coming up here to the Cambridge Hawks. So the 99ers will get their first power play of the game. Looks like number 24, the Hawks. The defenseman Anthony Guido is going to head off and we'll get the call here in just a second. But yeah. Brantford gets the power play. Interference will be the call. Just a little bit too aggressive at the blue line was Guido, and he'll be sitting down for two minutes less. This gives Brantford their first chance on the power play, and so far special teams this year, 27th in the league at 11.9%. So you know that this gives them a good opportunity to get on the scoreboard first against Cambridge here on home ice. Pocket center, Gratton overskates it. Gratton gets it right back, comes back the other way with... Badagoni, Badagoni lost it. Gratton then picks it up, plays it down on the corner. Badagoni is there. Leaves for Gratton. Good penalty killing here by the Hawks. 25 gone in the power play, and Cambridge will take the puck in zone. Back pedaling there is Alex Mills. Wrist one all the way down the ice, right on, and Kiri has to play it. He'll dish it off to Ferris. Ferris being checked by Gratton. Gratton steals it. Here's Gratton. Centers it. Badagoni couldn't get a shot away. Good short-handed opportunity there by Cambridge, but Brantford get the puck and fire it deep in the zone. Hawk out of the net. He'll play it to the blue line, but not out. Ferris fakes the shot, plays it back down low. Briscoe couldn't get his stick on it, and it's shot the length of the ice by the defenseman Zit Manis for Cambridge. Ferris in behind his own net. Just under a minute left in the power play. Still no score. Six minutes into the game. Lead pass, broken up. Here's Subban now, plays it ahead. Slapped down the ice by the Cambridge forward, Michaelis. And in behind the net there, Story will pick it up for Brantford. Up the right side for Bastian. Gets to the red line, fires it in. He loses a check there from Pleur. Puck bounces back to the blue line. Story couldn't keep it in. And Bastian hustles back for Brantford to pick it up. Plays it ahead to Story. Story shoots it in. Polilo grabs it. Here's Polilo with the puck, setting it up on the power play. Just 15 seconds left in it. Story with the puck at the left point, fires it in behind the net. For the forward, Cummins, another penalty coming up here, and it's going to be Cummins heading off. Not sure what Brown's going to call here, but cross-check will be the call. That'll do it for the Brantford power play. They really couldn't get much going on it. No, they really couldn't get anything going as well. And you know what? It comes down to the fact that Cambridge is so aggressive on the penalty kill. You see they put those forwards up so high. They're all over the defensemen. They don't give them much time or space to think with the puck. And also Cambridge, eight shorthanded goals for on the road so far this year. So you know that they're aggressive. The points speak for themselves. And then when you become so aggressive, you get the other team sort of skating around in circles. And then they took an undisciplined penalty cross-checking in the corner may have been a little bit of frustration on the part of Brantford but still you have to understand that they are so aggressive and just go with the flow and just get the pucks down to the end of the ice when you get control of them in the defensive zone. Face off Pereira and Grattan. Brantford come up with the puck. Penalized Hawks player now out of the box coming on to complete this power play with Michaelis. Fired in the corner and Badagoni had a good chance shorthanded just moments ago has the puck. Plays it down to Gratton. Gratton comes up with it somehow there. Good work by Gratton, but it's picked off. And Brantford cleared the puck to the blue line, but not out. Mills kept it in. Weak shot right on, and Keery will hang on for a faceoff coming up to his right. 30 seconds into the power play. Still no score between Cambridge and Brantford. Yeah, Keery coming off that loss to the Kitchener Dutchman, 6-1. to one. Played Guelph before that at home, lost 5-3 to three and then lost 5-2. to two. And Listowel not getting a whole lot of goal support is Andre right now. You feel like if you can put four to five pucks into the back of the net of the visiting goaltender, you'd give Andre more of a chance to win these hockey games for his team. Good, shirt, good uh, shift here by Paris Briscoe. Him and Subban battle for the puck in the corner. They still battle for it. Paris Briscoe, number 13 for Brantford. Good job killing off 20 seconds of that penalty kill. But the puck comes out to center now, and Cambridge come back with it. Puck shot to the blue line, just dribbles outside the zone. 
Picked up here by Baragoni. Swings it back to the point to Subban. Marcellus Subban. Left shot, Pointman fires it up to McAllis. McAllis tried to dump it in, fanned on that attempt, but still has the puck. Zemenko all over him. Now McAllis in the, in the offensive zone, now goes in behind the net. On his backhand, plays it back to Gratton. Gratton swings it across for Subban. Subban loses the puck. And a shorthanded break here now for the 99ers. Here's a shot right toe, just missed the far side. That coming off the stick of Scotty Penn Warden. So both teams with good chances shorthanded here early in the game. Still no score. Final seconds of the Cambridge power play. Lamont Tang couldn't keep it in. Good work there by Versami. Puck comes out through center. It's now for Brantford. Puts on the break, still has the puck. Plays it off the boards, but broken up and back the other way come the Hawks. Down the left side, here's Scott Pawson inside the zone. Drops it for Shell, his shot. Rebound right there and they score. Good pass, good shot, and the goaltender gave up the rebound. And it was, I think it was 76 that got that goal. Yeah, I believe that Scott Pawson came in, no, nice drop pass Lam 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 Lamontang got it. Lamontang got the rebound and buried it home. Nice, nice drop pass to Shell, and then right over to Lamontang, and he makes no mistake burying the rebound right there. That's Lamontang's fifth goal of the year and 13th point on the season. And again, we interviewed Scott Pawson before the game, and he's a point-of-game player, and right there, Potts' his fourth point in, fi in five games for the Cambridge Winterhawks. Got a timeout already in this hockey game. I believe Cambridge called it. Uh, you know what? There are some things that uh, you need to go over, and maybe he's just giving his team a little bit of a breather so far. I mean, we've had, I think, four penalties called already in this hockey game, so there's been a lot of special teams so far. Maybe just trying to get his team reamped up, start fresh here once again, and see if they can get the ball rolling with what they talked about in the dressing room before the hockey game. So the face-off comes out to center ice. We get our first look at the 98-born player, number 10, Zach Magwood for Cambridge. He's wearing the shield. Bastian out there with Ney and Polilo for Brantford. That's their top line. Mills now for Cambridge. Goes back into his own zone and picks it up. Bastian all over him. Now he sets it up in behind the net. Magwood for Cambridge. He's a speedy youngster. Plays the puck ahead for Shell. Bounces off his stick but goes down in the corner. Shell in behind the net. Plays the puck up the boards. Plilo trying to get it outside the zone. Slapped right back in there by the forward Peters. And it's shot out to center. Knocked down there by the big defenseman Zigmanis. He'll fire it right back in. Keery leaves it there for Ferris. Ferris plays it off the boards. Broken up. Puck goes off in the corners and Peters tries to center it. Bastian for Brantford. Penalty coming up here to Cambridge. As the 99ers bring the puck in the zone and fire it down in the corner. Going after there is Witzel for Cambridge, and he touches up, and a penalty behind the penalty by the forward Tyler Peters there as he tripped up the Brantford player. So the 99ers down by a goal, almost 10 minutes into the period, get a chance to tie this one up on the power play. Yeah, this will be their second power play of the game for Brantford, and Cambridge taking that one nothing lead, and when they score first, they're 14-5-2 in this 2012 2000 or sorry, 2013-2014 season. Man, the years go by pretty fast. But uh, So Cambridge, when they score first, they can be a dominant team, but now they've got to kill off a penalty here. Chard and Lamont Tang up front to kill it off for Cambridge. Brantford fired the puck in the zone. Huck comes out to play it. He'll snap it off the boards right to Zemenko. Zemenko, right corner, plays it in behind the net to Paris Briscoe. Centering pass broken up neatly there by the goal store, scorer, Lamont Tang for Cambridge. And he fires it down the ice. Keery in behind the net. Nathan Ferris the quarterbacks this power play, plays it up the wing. Zamenko now fires it deep in the zone, rolls around the boards into the corner. Picked up there by the Brantford forward versus Sammy. Puck now loose and Briscoe comes up with it. Paris Briscoe plays it on the right side. First Swanee fakes the shot, tried to feed it across. That was broken up and shot down the ice by the defenseman, Anthony Guido. Story will try it this time for Brantford. Number five. 50 seconds in the power play remaining for Brantford. Gratton broke up that play. Ney now swings it back to Story. Story goes cross ice to Bastian. Bastian, rink wide to Ney. He loses the puck. 
And now it's Zigmanis for Cambridge, and he'll fire it all the way down the ice. Good penalty killing here by Cambridge. Brantford just can't get anything going on the power play, down by a goal. 8.30 left in the first period. Here's Bastian for Brantford. Plays the puck up to Polillo inside the zone. Cummins goes to the net. Left back for Bastian. He'll move in. He'll wire it. Bastian shot. Blocker saved by Huck. And that puck deflected off his blocker out of play, so the faceoff will remain in the Cambridge zone with just 12 seconds left in the tripping minor to Tyler Peters of Cambridge. It almost took a minute 45, and Bastian shot there from the outside. Looked like the only glorious chance they had on this power play, and Ken, you said it. Brantford seems to have a tough time on the power play. Only two power play goals for in this season against Cambridge, and this their fifth game. So if they stick somebody in front of the net, maybe cause some havoc in front of the net, get them off their game a little bit in front, maybe slot area presence wouldn't hurt right now. Penalty now over, teams at full and even strength. Played ahead and shot in the zone. Racing after there for Brantford is Pereira. Comes up with the puck, plays it back. Broken up and shot in behind the net. Swung around the left wing board, right side there by Guido. Good job by Fitzpatrick to keep it in the zone. Cambridge with the puck, now they lose it. Play in the far corner. Played in behind there for the Brantford forward. Hart Holt getting his first shift of the game. Number 88, Luke Hart Holt. Long, high shot, gloved there by the goaltender, Curry. And to keep things safe, he will hang on. And we'll get a stoppage of play with 7.27 left. Still 1-0 for the visiting Cambridge Hawks over the hometown Brantford 49ers. Yeah, Curry, this will give Brantford fans a chance to take a look at him as Del Conte got traded over to the Kitchener Dutchman and he'll be taking over the crease for the rest of the season and a 94 born player here can also play for the team next year as well so it'll give Brantford chance it'll give Brantford a chance to really see what this kid's made of here's Magwood for Cambridge fires it back to the point flipped off the glass out to center kicked ahead there by the call up for Brantford number 14 the defenseman his name is Connor McKay here now is story for Brantford right side couldn't get by Pleur. Pleur then taps it off the boards. Kept in there by Briscoe neatly. Good first period here for number 13 for Brantford. It's Paris Briscoe. He almost had himself a shorthanded goal earlier in this period. Fired back in. Picked up by Witzel for Cambridge. Plays it ahead. Shell off his stick and right onto the goaltender. And Kiri will once again hang on and force a stoppage of play. And once Kiri gets a little bit uh, more comfortable in the night. You'll probably see him make that pass as that puck gets tipped in at the red line into his crease. You'll probably see him play that puck a little bit more. But right now, maybe feeling just a little bit uncomfortable with the defense, covers up, but look for him to maybe outlet that pass next time. Keep the play going as well a little bit. As you see, Cambridge gets an offensive faceoff draw and has the chance to uh, get a good shot on net after that. Good defensive play there by Bastian to Blocked that partial shot by Mills. It's Ferris now for Brantford, playing it up. Slapped off the boards out through center. Bastian goes after it. Bastian racing forward in the corner against the defenseman Zit Manis. It played Ney in the corner. Polilo's out front. Centers it. Polilo's shot. Just missed the short side. Good chance by the 49ers there, but they couldn't beat the goaltender Huck, and the whistle blows. I believe the net was dislodged from the peg, so a stoppage of play here. Yeah, both nets seem to be coming off their moorings quite easily here so far this evening. And you were talking about Bastion, also a point of game player, 40 points in 40 games, 15 goals, 25 assists. But you know what impressed me about Bastion is how he stays out of the penalty box. Only 18 penalty minutes in this his 41st game played. And as an offensive forward that has talent like that, state of the box shows you that when he's in those dirty areas, he knows how to play smart and also, that also says that he doesn't get really caught, get caught down deep either. Shows that he's got lots of speed and he can keep up with the play. Players like that, every team needs. And Palillo as well, I'm pretty sure that he learns a lot from him. So, uh, great player Bastion is, and you really have to circle him on the board if you're a Winterhawk here this evening. Face off one by Cambridge, fired out to the center ice area, kept broken up there by Story, and he slaps it back in the zone, and Cambridge have to go back to pick it up. Here's Guido. In front of his own net. Plays the puck high through center. Gratton goes after it. Story beats him to it. Story flips the puck off the boards but gave it away. In the corner there is Van Lowen for Brantford. Swings it up the left wing boards for Zemenko. 
Cross ice feed for Hart Holt. He picks it up on the fly. Shoots one right on. Huck made the save. Puck bounced in behind the net. Zemanko racing after for Brantford. Now Cambridge. Subban gave it away to Cummings. Here's Cummings centering pass and they score. Giveaway by Subban. A nice quick feed there by Cummings out to Zemanko. And the 99ers have tied it at one. Yeah, just a play that Subban wishes that he had back right there. Manko coming in, cleaning up the loose garbage in front of the net. And we talked about it before the game that Subban doesn't have to be so pretty with the puck. He just has to be keeping it simple and just has to look for his teammates. And that's just a play that he wants back right there as it gets Brantford on the board and ties this hockey game up at one. McKay fired it in for Brantford. Approaching the 15 minute mark of the opening period, icing waved off as Fitzpatrick goes back to pick it up. He'll stop in behind his own net. Now Kevin Fitzpatrick plays it up the left wing boards, bounced off Briscoe's skate, right back to the Cambridge player and fired right back into the Brantford zone. McKay plays it up the right side. It dribbles out through center. Back the other way comes Pereira. He's got Briscoe with him. Pereira shoots one off the stick of Zit Manis up into the meshing. And we'll get a stoppage of play with the faceoff remaining in the Cambridge zone. With 4.51 left in the opening period, we're tied at one, Brantford and Cambridge. Yeah, we talked about it with Brantford on the power play. That time they did have a body right on top of the crease. And when you get bodies on top of the crease, Huck has to reflect on that one in a hurry and once you get slot area presence in front of the net the way Brantford did they were rewarded with a goal we'll see if they stay in the dirty areas here for the remainder of the game as well good battle in behind the net for the puck Pereira gets it for Brantford trying to get the puck out to the line good work there by the Cambridge forward Moggy got the puck to the blue line and kept in there by Char. Char then gave it away slapped off the boards and out through center icing waved off Mont Lamont Tang at 8.59 for Cambridge and Hart Holt for Brantford at the 14.32 mark. We're tied 1-1 as we approach the 16-minute mark of the opening period. Ken Hornick, Scott Bridge on Rogers TV. Glad to have you along for this broadcast of the GOJHL contest between the Brantford 99ers in the dark colors and Cambridge Hawks in the white. Shot from the point, never made it through. Flipped up the right wing boards. Good pinch there by Brantford's defenseman to keep the puck in the zone. Penalty coming up here. I believe it's going to be against the 99ers, so Cambridge will get the power play when they give the puck up, unless they're able to score a goal here. Pass across here for Lamontang, the goal scorer for Cambridge. Good work there to hang on to the puck, but he had three Brantford players all over him and finally gave it up, and Brantford touches up. And a penalty coming up here to the big defenseman, Van Loyen, for Brantford. It'll be a roughing call. Yeah, so far Cambridge 0 for 2 on the power play. Get another chance here to work the puck around and Harthold who got the goal for Brantford. That's his fourth goal of the season, seventh point of the year. Six foot, 175 pound forward. It's his team on the board to tie the game, but now killing off a penalty and an important power play if you're a Winterhawks fan to take that lead so deep into the first period. Subban plays it up here to Michaelis. Gets into the zone, fires it in behind the net. Bottagoni gets there for Cambridge, swings it back left point for Subban. Gratton shot, never made it through, shot out and down the ice by Polillo and he'll take a rest. Him and Basti were up front. In fact, the Brantford 99ers have four fresh skaters on the ice. 35 seconds gone on the power play. Here's Bottagoni, puts on the brakes, makes a nice move, still has the puck. Good play there by Gratton to keep the puck in the offensive zone on this power play. Swings it across to Subban. He couldn't control it. Now he gets it back. Here's Subban firing one wide on the far side. Puck bounces out to the blue lining. Brantford come back the other way. Hart Holt, Brantford's goal scorer in this game, has the puck. Slips it out front there. Hits the side of the net and bounces in behind the net for Gratton. Gratton then swings it up the right side. Here's... Pinder for Brantford, or check that Cambridge, firing it in the corner. Shell is there, plays it back to Mills. His shot, rebound comes out. And a good play there by the defenseman to stop that shot from getting through by Lamont Tang as he was left all alone. Here's Shell. Lamont Tang overskates it, Brantford with it. Clear to the blue line and just bounces out. 
25 left in the power play, 155 in the period. Cambridge played the puck up to the line, but not in. Played up the left side, shorthanded chance for Brantford. Briscoe's out in front, he slaps one right on, and rebound, oh, good save there by Hockey, made a good save on the first shot, and an even better save on the rebound. Here's Briscoe again, shooting, oh, and Briscoe goes upstairs, and Brantford jump out to a 2-1 lead with a good shorthanded goal there with 1.38 left in the first period. Yeah, you, you see the no-quit attitude in the Brantford 99ers deep into the zone. They get Huck moving side to side, shorthanded, taking that shot. Huck out of position, tried to get up the best that he could, but Brantford not giving up in front of the net. Driscoll Potts, his sixth goal of the season, shorthanded. And that's just Brantford's third shorthanded goal on home ice this year. But a good no-quit attitude, especially when you're shorthanded that deep, getting players in front of the net, cycling in and behind the net. Just a good performance individually in front of the net. Well, Van Loyen came out of the box, and that pass was intended for the Cambridge forward, number 92, Peters, and Van Loyen laid him out. Fired back in by Witzel of Cambridge. 115 in the period. Story puts it there for Ferris. Ferris almost lost it, but comes up with the puck. Ferris plays it up through center. At the line, shot in, racing after it there. Is the speedy forward for Brantford, Pereira. Puck in behind the net. Brantford trying to open up a two goal lead. They lead it 2 1, final minute of the opening period. Cambridge opened up the scoring. At the 8.59 mark and two goals late here in the first half, the hometown 99ers on top, 2-1. Good forecheck here by Branford to keep the puck in. Cummins lets a quick shot go from the right side. Hash marks and handled easily by the goaltender Huck there with 38.2 left on the clock. And so far, Branford doing a good job keeping Cambridge off the board with the power play. So far this year, it's been a little bit of the opposite, but Brantford coming out with a lot of energy early, and you see that Cambridge out shooting Brantford so far. Now that might actually put them ahead in the shots for category, but Huck has looked good so far, and so is Carey for Brantford. He's made those saves look, look easy from the outside. He's controlled his rebounds, and anytime it's shot to his glove, he seems to catch it, give his team that all-important face-off. Story with a shot from the line, deflected in front by Ney. Now Palila with it. Bastian's out front, got it. Couldn't get a shot away. Good back chair there by Michaelis. There's a long, hard drive from the blue line by Story that went wide. Good pressure here late in the first by Brantford. Palilo's pass picked off. Palilo fights for it and gets it back. Here's Palilo shooting, and he didn't get much on it. Never made it through, and it's picked up there by the defenseman Guido and slapped out to center. Late break here for Cambridge. Michaelis with it. Michaelis cross ice feed there for Pawson, but it was out of his reach. And that will nullify the scoring chance for the Cambridge Hawks. But a surprising leader here after 20 minutes. Brantford up by a score of 2-1. Yeah, Brantford up. And I don't think that Michaelis knew how much time was left on the clock when he tried to feather that pass over through the middle of the ice as there's only two seconds left when he passed it. Maybe if he knew there, how much time was left on the clock, he would have fired that puck on net. Better chance of scoring the goal. So the inexperienced team leading the experienced team after 20 minutes here tonight from the Brantford Wayne Gretzky Sports Center. More play-by-play -play action coming up in a few moments on Rogers TV. Here with Cambridge Winterhawks forward Scott Pawson and Scott, you've been sent over in a trade here to Cambridge uh, for Austin Corvick. Uh What's it been so far since the transitions uh, been done here? Uh, it's uh, it's been a, a bit of a change there, but uh, you know, good group of guys, uh, a little bit older, so uh, you know, I fit in pretty nice. A lot of Northern guys, so uh, there's a bit of a connection there. I played played against them and played with them in summer hockey and stuff, so it's been good. And uh, for the Winterhawks fans that don't know you, you're about a point a game player, and uh, since coming over in uh, now your fifth game, three points, uh, how's the transition been with working on the power play? I know you got a power play assist, a quarterback in the power play still, or how's that going? Uh, you, you know, we're working on it. Our power play hasn't been uh, where we want it to be, but, uh, you know, it's uh, just doing the little things right and uh, trying to, 
you know, uh, pave my way here and, uh, you know, get a spot on here. And because, you know, we got a lot of good players on the power play, so it's tough to crack. But, uh, you know, I'm just doing whatever I can to help them win. How's the feeling in the dressing room uh, getting all amped up for the playoffs? How do you think you guys are going to do this year? Uh, hopefully a long run. You know, uh, we got a lot of older guys, some guys that have been there last year. And, uh, you know, there's uh, nothing out there that uh, says we can't uh, make a good run here. Well, thanks for doing this, Scott. Really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks. Welcome back to the Wayne Gretzky Sports Center. Second period action just about to get underway between the Brantford 99ers and the Cambridge Hawks. 2-1, Brantford on top, a surprising leader after 20 minutes. Yeah, Cambridge jumping out and taking a 1-0 lead early in this hockey game. Le Montaigne getting his fifth goal of the season, assist by Shell and Poss, and Brantford then answering the bell, Hartholt from Cummings, and then Briscoe shorthanded gave Brantford a 2-1 lead, and Brantford out shooting Cambridge 12-8 after one. And right off the hop here to start the second, 15 seconds in. Brantford come out of their own zone to center. Here's big Nathan Bastian. He had a pretty strong opening, 20 minutes. Got lots of ice time, had a few scoring chances. He's rubbed out of the play there, though. Puck comes to the line, and Ferris shoots it in. But it's shot right back out to center, and the Winterhawks come back the other way. Now on the left side, drop pass there. There's a shot deflected off the stick of Alex Botagoni off into the corner, and Story is there for Brantford. David Story. Dangerously in front of his own, it gave it away in a quick snapshot off the stick of Pinder. First scoring chance of the second period. A giveaway there by the Brantford defender, but a good save there by Kiri to keep this a 2-1 hockey game. And what a glove save by Kiri. That was point blank at the side of the net, getting it as far as he could. And with that left-hand highway robbery, keeping his team in it. But you don't want to give the puck away at the side of the net like that and give the Winterhawks too much time and space. You'll find yourself trailing in the hockey game and trying to climb that uphill mountain. Shot on the goaltender, Hawk. He decides to hang on to it. And just as he was about to release it to Subban, the Linesman blew the play down and the result the face off deep in the Cambridge Winterhawks zone. Exactly 60 seconds gone here in the second period. Glad to have you along for this broadcast of the GOJHL, the Brantford 99ers in the dark, and Cambridge Winterhawks in the white Brantford on top 2 1. Briscoe, the goal scorer, hit hard, knocked down there by Guido, the defenseman for Cambridge. Kept in now. Here's Briscoe again. His shot blocked in front. Rebound goes on to the Stick of the Brantford forward Pereira, and his shot was saved by Huck. Cambridge back the other way. Nice move by Michaelis, but he couldn't get the puck deep in the zone. It's loose in the far wing. Brantford pick it up and fire it out through center. Guido, who just laid that big hit on Paris Briscoe, fires it right back in, and Briscoe tried to repay him with a hit there. Behind the net. Brantford now out to center. Giveaway there. Moggy got it. Slaps it back in the Brantford zone, and Van Loyen goes back for it. He swings it around the left wing boards, picked off there by Chard, but then Chard overskates it and comes out to center. Zamenko lost it. Goes back to Van Loyen on the point, up through the middle. Hartholt. Hartholt gives it to Cummins. Cummins then rips one in around the boards. Back to Hartholt on the right side. He slaps at it, but Fan on that shot. And Cambridge come back the other way. Here is Lamontang, shot wide off the backboards, out to the blue line. Plourd fires one off the backboards, goes right to McKay, and he'll swing it up the left side here for Zamenko. Goes cross ice to Hartholt, Hartholt breaks down his off wing, centers it, and it goes off onto the far boards, and in the process, the Brantford player hit the goaltender's net, and it came off its moorings. I believe they, maybe the Cambridge player knocked it off. Looks like the faceoff will remain in the Winterhawks zone. Yeah, Connor McKay, the forward for the Brantford 99ers, in behind his own net. He'll be wearing number 14 tonight for the team in blue. Did a good chant or did a good job of getting that puck out in the neutral zone in transition, giving his team a chance to go the other way. An opportunity to score a goal. That puck was feathered right in front of the net, but as you saw, nobody was home. Brantford needs to go hard to the net continue that play going. Good pinch by Story, the defenseman. The puck bounces outside the line, slapped right back in there by Fitzpatrick. 
Picked up in behind the net. Here's Mogwood. Mogwood now out to his line to center, swings it across. Just out of the reach of his winger there, Devin Shell. Back the other way come Cambridge, or Brantford rather. This is Story to center and firing it in. In behind the net. Picked up there by Zit Manis. And an injured player. It's number five for Brant for the defenseman, David Story, up on the play. And he looks to be hurting. The trainer will be heading onto the ice here to see what's up. I missed that. Not sure what happened. But Story, a defenseman, was deep in the offensive zone there. Maybe he got hit. Maybe he got hit hard in the corner. Not sure. I think it just happened coming over the blue line. <clears throat> Looked like maybe a late hit. And then he slid most of the way into the corner. And I know that Brantford's holding their breath, hoping that he's okay. Logging a lot of ice time this year, and this is 35th game, has yet to score a goal, eight assists. 102 penalty minutes for the big defenseman number five. And you know what? That doesn't lead the team in penalty minutes. Nathan Ferris, the defenseman number 11, has 133 penalty minutes in 38 games played. So far this year, now Story gets taken off the ice. He'll go to the dressing room and get some attention, go over things with him and to make sure he knows where he is and, and what exactly is going on. And Brantford took the lead into the second period and when leading after the first period, Brantford 3-5-2. and two. Not many opportunities to take the lead into the second period, but when they do, three wins so far here this year. Face off outside the Cambridge line. Herrera took the draw for Brantford and won it easily. Gratton wasn't ready for the faceoff. Play resumes, though. Subalis will pick it up in behind it. Sub Subban, rather. Marcellus Subban picks it up and plays it ahead. Shot into the Brantford zone. Racing after it there is the speedy winger, Batagoni. Still has it off the boards. There's a shot off into the corner, and Brantford will get a chance to clear the zone. They fire it out through center. Subban goes after it. Right on his tail is Ferris. Played up the right side, Batagoni over skates it. It goes down the ice and Cambridge charged with an icing. 16-16 left in the second, 2-1 after the first, and that still is the score. Three minutes and 44 seconds into the third, second period. As shots 3-1 in favor of Brantford right now in the second period, and you just see Subban back in the defensive zone, fling around, almost gave that puck away. About two feet away were the 99ers for picking that puck off, and it went the length of the ice, went the length of the ice for icing. So Subban just might want to take that puck, go behind the net, and see if he can find an open winger and maybe make that breakout play less palm sweaty. Face off will be deep in the Brantford zone. A good rush there by the defenseman for Cambridge, number 20, Anthony Guido. Just got ready to get a shot away and fanned on it. Palillo wins the draw and goes after it himself. Plays it back into the corner. Nay gives it away. Here's a chance now for Cambridge, but they couldn't get a shot away. That was Pawson with the puck. He still has it. Centers it. Quick shot by Michaelis there. Never got through. And Cambridge with a good shift here. Here's Michaelis shooting one. Blocked in front. Bastian flips it up the right wing boards. Kept in there by Cambridge. Loose puck now scooped up by the uh, Brantford forward Zemenko, and he'll bring it up the wing. Gives to Bastian. Bastian plays it out through center. Nay gets his stick on it and fires it in the corner. Palillo goes after it. Shot out through center. And the puck bounces down the ice. Icing is waved off here. Kire plays it ahead to Bastian. Bastian dances inside the line. Let's a shot go. That's blocked. There's a shot there off the stick of the Brantford defenseman. Fitzpatrick never made it through. And Cambridge come back the other way. It's a three-on-two break. Long wrist shot from well out, handled easily by the Brantford goaltender. Yeah, Kiri at the top of his crease, doing a good job to catch that puck and not let it go around the boards. Cambridge, every time they enter the offensive zone, they seem to throw it on net, see if they can catch Kiri sleeping just a little bit. But you know what? He's done a good job of being alert, gobbling up those pucks and not letting a rebound go out just like that. He's been on top of everything so far here tonight, the defense giving them some block shots as well, and you also see Brantford getting, getting in front of their own shots in the offensive zone as well. So doing a good job of blocking the pucks here tonight, but as long as Kiri can see the puck, looks like he's gonna stop it. I don't think he saw that one off the stick of 
Zit Manis, but he was able to get his right pad on it to keep it 2-1. And just prior to that, Lamont Tang with a good chance off the faceoff. So Kiri having a real strong game here tonight. His team on top, 2-1, six minutes. Approaching the six-minute mark of the second period. At center, here's Lamont Tang. He'll let one go right on and well out of his net to cut down the angle and make the easy save in the chest protector. That here's Kiri. Yeah, again, just stepping over the blue line and firing it on net. Obviously, the coaching staff, the Cambridge Windrocks, Corey McRae, going over something with the team. They obviously maybe see a flaw in trying to bounce it off his chest protector wherever they can. They feel like that's going to give them the best opportunity to score, but so far it's not working here in the second. Here's Hartholt with Briscoe joining him on the rush. Hartholt still has it. Bumped off the play there neatly by Subban, and Cambridge come up with the puck, but they can't get it out right now. Slapped off the right wing boards for Peters. Peters gets it over to Guido. Guido swings it ahead. And here comes Shell down the left side. Magwood waiting for the pass in front. Goes back on the point. Subban tees it up in a hard shot. Good save there by Kire. Rebound off into the corner. Good work there by Magwood. The minor midget player up playing here tonight in this league. Not a big body, but always on the puck. And real smart when he gets the puck and he has it again. Centers it. Guido lost it. Back the other way come the 99ers. Here's Hartholt down the right side. Hartholt moving in, shooting, and a glove save there by the goaltender, Huck, as Brantford gets an odd man rush there, but Huck makes the save. Yeah, Briscoe trying to score his second goal of the hockey game, but Huck denying him of that opportunity, and Huck playing real solid here tonight as Brantford is out shooting Cambridge. And the last couple games, Huck's been on fire, beating Kitchener and Waterloo. The teams that set 1-3 in the Midwestern Conference. So he's seen some hot teams right now, and his play seems to be right up there as well. At the blue line, kept in by the Brantford uh, defender. There is Zemenko. Down on the corner for Ney. Ney on the right side. Has it with time. Snaps one sharp angle. Good save by Huck. He got his left pad on it. And no rebound, he'll hang on for another faceoff deep in the, deep in the Winter Hawk zone. Uh, these two teams are going to be playing a rescheduled game in Cambridge at 7.30 at the Galt Arena coming up. And also then Cambridge will be playing another rescheduled game versus Brampton in Cambridge February 6th at 7. Those games being rescheduled due to the weather. Down the right wing boards, here's Bilton with Grattan and Bog Bodagoni. That's the big line for Cambridge, and they're going to get a penalty here. Cambridge, Brantford player stick was knocked out of his hand, and it wasn't real vicious, but whenever the stick is knocked out of a hand, the, the officials seem to call it. I don't agree with that call all the time, and I don't like it when the stick is broken. They call a penalty every time. These sticks, you can breathe on them. They, some of them times they break, but... That, that, wasn't re that wasn't a real big slasher, but he's going to get called for a slash, I do believe. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you see it on the one-timer shots as well. That if, whether you're a forward or a defenseman, these sticks are shattering easier than they ever have before. And you see Scott Pawson jawing as well at the penalty box with Fitzpatrick. And it looks like there's going to be a penalty going to Cambridge as well. So this will be offsetting minors. Five on five will be the action. So no power play for either team right now. Yeah, well, Cambridge had the first penalty, then the uh, Brantford player came in and did something after that initial penalty. So I don't think Scott Rex will be too happy about that. Here's a shot from the point. Ferris let it go. Puck is loose in the slot. Backhand shot off the stick of the Brantford forward, Scotty Penn Warden there, and Huck makes the save as Cambridge pretty sloppy in their own zone. Another penalty coming up here. A cross check is going to be the call. And it's going against Cambridge. That'll be uh, Marsalis. Hudson Marsalis going to head off. And Brantford will get that power play, leading by a goal. And yeah, this will give Brantford their third power play opportunity of this hockey game. 0 for 2 on the power play so far. And we talked really at the top there, Ken. Or at least the one thing I thought in my mind is that Brantford has to go hard to the net and they have to give Huck a tough time. Well, that's exactly what they did when they were five on five after the refs offsetted the power plays. And Brantford went hard to the net, cycled it in front. They got Huck moving a little bit, bumped them after the whistle. And that's exactly what they have to do against the Cambridge Winterhawks. Good work by Brantford on the power play. 
20 seconds into it, Briscoe lost the puck and Cambridge with a chance to clear and they will. Bastian playing the point on this power play. Puck goes back to the goaltender, he swings it up to his defenseman. Zemeko, in fact, looks like Brantford have five forwards on the ice on this power play. Here's Bastian through center down to the blue line. Down the right side, Bastian with speed, cuts in behind that, tried to wrap around, and in the process, the goaltender Huck slid across, knocked the net off its moorings, and the faceoff will be deep in the zone of the Cambridge Winterhawks. Good rush there by Nathan Bastian. Yeah, Bastian, such an enforcer on the ice when it comes to the offensive dangling. And you see him there on the right wing, work his way in behind the net, fake the shot, try it on the wraparound to get Huck moving left to right. Just a little bit too slow on the play right there, but the net came off. I feel like if the net stayed on, Bastian maybe had a chance for that rebound. Here's Polilo for Brantford. Once again, Scott Rex with five forwards out there on the power play. Cummins. Pokes the puck up the wing. Goes back on the point now for Zamenko. Back cross ice. Bastian tees it up. Deflected in front. I think it hit that the Cambridge defenseman stick. Guido and the goaltender Huck makes another good save. 50 seconds left in the Brantford power play. They get the puck and swing it up the left side for Polilo. Here's Guy Polilo. Into the Cambridge zone. Being checked closely by Guido. Cummins grabs it. On his backhand. Plays it back to Bastian. Bastian with it, swings it across here. Zamenko shot right on, no traffic in front, and Huck was able to make the save look rather easily. Yeah, Huck can see that puck through traffic. There wasn't a whole lot of mustard behind that shot and was able to gulp it up. And Lucas Mikulski, since coming back to the Cambridge Winterhawks, who watching the game from the bench tonight in 11 games, just four wins, five losses, and two shootout losses, one shutout, that came in Listowel. So Mikulski... If Huck keeps playing this way, maybe have a uh, little bit of a duel on their hands here. Huck, pretty good goaltender. He's got the size, got the quickness, playing good here tonight. His team, though, down by a goal and down a man for 15 more seconds. Centering pass, quick shot there by Briscoe. And another good save by Huck. The puck is loose in the slot. And the referee is right there, and he calls the play. Yeah, again, going hard to the net, and that's exactly what you need to do on the power play. You see them sifting to the outside and then going hard to the net. And Cambridge does a good job of collapsing the defensemen do down low, giving their goaltender some added support. And you see that anytime they come near goaltender Huck, they're all over the forwards that are swarming the crease like bees. And that's exactly what you need to do. But you see Brantford moving the puck around on the power play. And I've seen them play just a couple times this year, and this is probably the best that I've seen their power play maneuver the puck. Short five on three advantage for Brantford. Scott, Coach Scott Rex will keep out the five forwards on the power play. Cambridge win the face off. The puck goes into the corner. Here's Mills trying to kill some time off that first penalty. And it's over now. It's now a five on four power play for Brantford. They have the puck at the point. Bastian fires one, just missed the short side. Here's Michaelis now snapping one all the way down the ice and the goaltender Kiray will come out and play it. Fires it up the left wing boards. Bastian goes after it for Brantford. Almost lost it. In fact, he did lose it and Bottagoni grabbed it and fired it back in. Big kill here for Cambridge down by a goal, 2-1, approaching the 10 minute mark of the second period. Down the right side, Bastian goes in behind the net. Now forced into the corner. Being checked closely there by Mills. Nay in to help out as is Polilo. Three Brantford players against one Cambridge player. Now Brantford come up with a puck. Polilo hit hard from behind by Grattan. Back on the point. Here's Bastian again. Snaps it on the left wing boards for Cummins. Play broken up by Mills. He gets the puck and check that. Uh, that was defenseman uh, Zit Manis and he fires it down the ice. Good penalty kill by Cambridge. 50 seconds left in the power play for Brantford. Zamenko out to center. Feeds it across here for Van Loyne inside the zone, moving in, shooting, block, rebound, goes to Van Loyne. He got another shot away, and Huck made the save but couldn't corral the rebound. Now here's Gratton for Cambridge. Gratton out through center. He's with Lamont Tang, shorthanded. Gratton moving to the right side. Holds on, tried to center it off the side of the net. Puck loose in the far corner, and Van Loyne will grab it for Brantford. He's knocked down by Grattan. Van Loyen then plays the puck neatly. 
to his teammate there, Penn Wharton. He comes out to center, fires one in the right-hand corner. Subban goes after it. Bis Briscoe beat him to it. Hartholt loses the puck. Penalized player now back on the ice. Still 2-1, Brantford on top. A low-scoring game here. Snapshot right on. Rebound comes out to the corner. Goes back now to Subban on the point. He wires one, never made it through. Puck is loose in the slot. Fired off the boards and out to center. Subban will have to hustle back to get it for Cambridge, and he's there first. Goes in behind his own net. Briscoe will take his seat now on the Brantford bench. Pinder was off his stick and down the ice. Ferris will get back first for the 99ers. Ferris taken away from him. Good four check here by Pawson from Cambridge. Centers it, and it's broken up and back. The other way comes Camacho. Off the left side to Cummins. Plurd knocked him off stride. Loose puck picked up by Cambridge and fired down the ice. Icing is waved off. Fitzpatrick fires it up the right side, off the skate, picked off and back. The other way comes Witzel for Cambridge. Witzel centers it. Pinder snaps when he scores. Broken play there, and Witzel, the defenseman, brought the puck up on the offensive attack. Made a nice move in the corner, centered it out front for Pinder, and this game is now tied 2-2. Yeah, Witzel in behind the net. Nice play to center it in front. Pinder scoring his 15th goal of the season. Top shelf, that is, too. What a beautiful goal that was. Tying this hockey game up at 2. 7.33 left to play. Just when you think the 99ers in this game were going to make it a 3-1 to one lead with the opportunities they've had, Cambridge answers the bell. And a beautiful goal it was. Here's Mills for Cambridge, firing it up to Lamont Tang. Slapped out through center. Moggy trying to get there first. Picked up now. Here's a chance now for Zit Manis. Moving in all alone. He couldn't get a shot away. Good defensive play there by the Brantford defenseman Fitzpatrick to break it up. Back the other way come the 99ers. Puck goes off. Nay stick into the corner. He beats Lamont Tang to it. Nay comes up with it. Tried to center it. It's loose in the slot. And Cambridge come back three on two. Under seven left in the second period. Two to the score. Slap shot by Chard. Blockered off to the boards there. And Nay has it for Brantford, but he can't clear the zone. Nay fighting for it in the far wing. Van Loyne is in there to help out. Puck loose comes back to the blue line. Snapped in by Mills in behind the Brantford net. Here's Ferris slapping it up the right side. Nay can't get it. In behind the net. Pass out front there by Moggy. Never made it through. Now a shot from a sharp angle and a glove save there by Keery off the stick of the forward, Scotty Pawson for Cambridge. And good pressure there by the Winterhawks, but they still find themselves in a 2-2 deadlock here with the Brantford 49ers with 6.21 left in the second period. Yeah, curie has been real busy here in this second period. It looks like he's calmed himself down. Seems like he's getting into a groove. Brantford still out shooting Cambridge here in this second period. Opportunities going back and forth. Paris Briscoe, good on the four check again. He's having a pretty strong game here tonight. He's number 13 for the Brantford 99ers. He's a big boy, 6'4", 210. He scored his sixth goal of the year earlier in this contest. There's Penn Warden centering it. Pereira tried to flip it out front to Ferris, who's up on the play. He's a defenseman, but he jumped up on the rush. Penn Warden hit hard into the fireboards by Plourd. Cambridge can't clear it, loose in the slot. Lead pass for Pinder, he'll have a partial break here. Here's Pinder, he just scored a moment ago. Gets a backhander away, and Kiri makes the save as Pinder was sent in all alone. Got a shot away, didn't get much on it, but the goaltender makes another save and we're still tied 2-2. And it looks like Pinder may have honestly got slashed there as he tried to release the puck and kind of surprised there's not a penalty called as it affected his shot on net. And Ken, you said it, this is a low scoring game here so far this evening. Goals four per game this year for Brantford, 2.4. And then for Cambridge, just 3.21 goals per game. So both teams, not huge scores so far this year. And the stats show it. Cambridge so far this year, 122 goals four and this is their 39th game. And Brantford right at 100 goals and this their 42nd game. Brantford with a play there, it looked like a design play. They tried to flip the puck high, almost like a football play, but the puck just went 
past the icing red line and they were called thrice and Cambridge won the face up but Brantford come up the puck and come back the other way. Good work there by the Brantford forward versus Sammy to get the puck in the corner. At the blue line, Van Loyen kept it in. Tapped back into the corner. Here's Caleb Witzel for Cambridge, playing it off the boards to the line and not out. Shot well wide of the marker. Plourd then plays it up the right side for Shell. Here comes Magwood, two on two with Peters. Shell joins the play. Magwood loses it, but it goes right to Shell moving in, shooting! And a blocker saved there by the goaltender, Kire. Loose puck in the slot. Here's Shell with it now. Puts it back to the point. Mills with it. Fires one high, right on, rebound in the slot. Magwood takes a whack at it. Puck is loose. Mills again from the point. Fires one just wide of the marker. And they score. Broken play again. Looks like Magwood, the call up, the minor midget player, gets his first junior B goal here tonight. Scoring to make it 3 2 for Cambridge. Yeah, you're right. It's going to be Magwood, doorstep. Johnny on the spot, scores that goal through the five hole on Kiri, and Mills doing a good job at the point. They got that puck back to him twice as they were scrambling in front of the net. So calm, so cool, so collective with the puck. He missed the net by about two feet, but it went right onto the stick of Magwood as he potted it home to give Cambridge a three to two lead as they've had two unanswered goals here in the second period. Brantford's defense a little bit sloppy in the second period. They're jo jumping up in the play quite a bit. Probably a good idea to stay back and play D against a team like Cambridge. And here is a defenseman for Cambridge, Subban with it. Plays it ahead, Gratton at center. Up to Bilton, Bilton over skates it, gets it back. Snapshot by Guido, blocker save there by Kire. Now Brantford the chance, Cambridge the chance behind the net. Here's Bilton back on the point. Gratton shot, deflected high off a stick into the mesh. I believe went off a Brantford player stick, so the faceoff will remain in the Brantford 99ers territory. Yeah, huge offensive faceoff for Cambridge as they try to take a two-goal lead going into the second intermission. And Kiri doing all he can do right now to help his team stay in this hockey game. Brantford, the last five minutes or so, not a whole lot of offensive support with shots on net. Back the other way come Brantford, fired off the boards and down the ice. Guido, first man back for Cambridge, plays it up the left side. Now Subban can't clear it out. Kept in, chance now for Brantford. They lost it. Slapped at by Zemenko. Puck loose in the slot. Play pretty scrambly right now. And Brantford lose it. Fed ahead to Gratton. Gratton trying to get by McKay. McKay gets back first. Gratton hammers him into the boards. Up the left side, thought out to center. Bounced over the stick of Briscoe and it's shot back in by Plourd. Here's McKay for Brantford, approaching the 17 minute mark of the second period. Brantford with a pair in this, or rather Cambridge with a pair of goals in the second period. Now have the lead by a score of 3-2 and we're gonna get a stoppage of play here. I, is it a penalty? Is it a, somebody's getting called for a penalty? So late in the second period. Briscoe's going to get the call. Cambridge on the lead. We'll get the power play. Looks like he might be going to the box for boarding. We can see what the official call is. So Magwood getting back to that goal, gets the goal, and Sats Tracker says it's unassisted. I don't understand how they can not give Alex Mills an assist on that play. Off the face off, Cambridge with the power play, control it. Is it Manis? Here's Possum, gets it back. Good puck movement here on the power play. Cross ice for Mills, fires one, rebound comes out. And it's picked up by Lila Montague. Montague plays it down low, gets it back, then he overskates it, and Brantford will fire it down. 30 seconds gone in the power play. Cambridge in the white. The Winterhawks lead this one 3-2. They're on the power play and they come back the other way. Skating through center Mills, he'll wire one around the boards. Possum lets it go for Zitmana. Zitmana then flips it in behind the net. Lamontang comes up with it for Cambridge, plays it down on the corner. Here's Shell, Shell, checked closely by Ferris. Ferris then loses the puck. Lamontang out front, snaps one, good pad save there by Kire. 
Good setup there in Lamont Tang, almost had his second of the night. Here's Lamont Tang with it. There's a battle out front, Shell and Ferris back in the point. Mills wires one, just missed the far side. Here's Zint Manis in behind the Cape Brantford net. Still has the puck. Plays it off. Back in the point now, Mills will let it go. Shot deflected in front. And the goaltender, Curie, makes another save. Good flurry there by Cambridge, but they couldn't score on this power play, which has 39 seconds left in it. Yeah, the power play is looking real effective so far. And you see those shots coming from the blue line traffic in front, going for those tips. And Curie, Johnny on the spot, top of the crease once again to make those saves and gobble up with no rebound. But Cambridge has to start getting bodies in front of Curie force him to look around players that might open up some holes. Brantford win the draw, and they'll shoot the puck out and down. Bastian races after it. Grattan beat him to it. Grattan, good work to come up with the puck and out of his own end. Swings it across the left wing boards for Bottagoni. He couldn't corral it. Now picked up. Here's Marcellus. Plays it on the wing. Now back in the point for Grattan. Grattan. Shot right on, rebound. Brantford can't clear. In the slot. Puck is loose. Now Marcellus for Cambridge. Good puck control here. Nice move in the slot. Loses it. And Brantford shoots it down and kill it off. Final minute of the second period. Break here for Briscoe. Is out of the box and offside will be the call. They almost caught him coming out of the penalty box. And the pass was just... Too far in the air, the puck was on edge. And they just couldn't get control of it and there'll be two assists on the second goal by Magwood, Mills and Moggy, grabbing two assists on that goal that gave Cambridge a three to two lead. Back in the point for Zit Manis. Over to Mills, Mills fires it, missed the marker. Puck goes to Magwood, fires it down on the corner. Here's Van Loyen for Brantford, up to Briscoe. Slap shot from Zit Manis, just missed the blocker side. Down in the corner, good pressure by Cambridge late in the second. Nice move there by the Cambridge forward. That was Peters and he couldn't get a shot away and Magwood having a real strong game tonight. Number 10 for Cambridge, fired it deep in the zone. Off the left side, Briscoe can't get it out. Zit Manis snaps one towards the net, that was blocked. Shot goes off the back glass, in behind the net. Brantford played off the left wing board. Zit Manis keeps it in neatly. Zit Manis then fires it back in. Shell try to center. Here's Magwood with a shot and right on. And Keery with another save as Brantford all over the place. Their own ends are almost cost him. But again, Keery to the rescue making the save. Yeah, Keery makes another huge save with just 5.9 seconds left. Cambridge can smell blood thinking they're going to be taking a two goal lead into the intermission. But Keery has been on the ball here so far and Cambridge throwing 20 shots his way so far this period. 28 altogether this evening. Cambridge is shooting brand for 2013. Final seconds of the second period. Brantford win the face off and we'll get the puck out to center. And the buzzer will go here at the Wayne Gretzky Sports Center. So a 2-1 lead after 24 Brantford but Cambridge Come back with a pair of goals here to lead this one 3-2. Yes, that's right, and it's the goals that matter in this hockey game, and Brantford's doing a good job of hanging around and making it difficult for the Winter Hawks to run away with this hockey game, as I'm sure they don't want to happen. So Brantford just has to regroup, go back to the drawing board during the intermission and figure out how to stop Cambridge, but figure out how to put a few goals behind Huck, who's looked great in the second period. Hope they're enjoying the contest on Rogers TV. It's the Brantford 99ers and the Cambridge Winterhawks from the Wayne Gretzky Sports Center in Brantford. More play-by-play -play action coming up in a few moments. of the Brantford 99ers, Re er, Scott Rex. And Scott, um, so far this year, uh, the team's very young. It's, uh, it's got a lot of learning curves. Uh, what are your thoughts on the team so far this season? 
Uh, you, you're right. We are young, and uh, we were inexperienced coming in. Uh, we're getting better every day, and that was kind of the the theme. You know, it doesn't make you feel any better some nights, but we are making strides in what we're doing, and you know that's going to serve us down the road quite well. Now, uh, a uh, new goaltender in the crease tonight as uh, Del Conte goes over to Kitchener. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the netminders here on out? Well, Andre, you know, Andre backed up Marcus. Uh, you know, it was a bit of a platoon system, but uh, Andre's been here all year. And, yeah, we've just kind of given him the ball the rest of the way. It was a great opportunity for Marcus. Marcus was a great teammate and a great servant of the club here. So, um, you know, happy for Marcus. You know, we, we like him a lot. We wish him the best there. But it created an opportunity for Andre Kier, so hopefully he takes the most of it. Now you guys have a lot of uh, up-and-coming guys here uh, the next couple of years. What are some of the things that you're really pinpointing things on in practice that you really want your guys to nail down? Well, the biggest theme, and, and it was tough when we had no players to start with, was, uh, you know, uh, players that played at this level. You know, a little different if you had so a year from now we've got a group of guys whether this group stays the same at least they've got a year of seasoning at this level so uh it's really it was a daily thing teaching them how to compete you know that's big uh, that's the biggest factor you know what i want out of a player i want that compete level every night some guys weren't used to doing that some guys think they're competing but they're not really competing to the level that we require so um yeah that, that's got to be our calling card with starting from scratch like that you're taking on Cambridge tonight. Uh, you know what? They've got uh, a lot of guys that are a little bit older, more experienced. Uh, what are you telling the team there uh, as the Zamboni's going around and before puck drop? Well, you know what? We need to make some noise. You know, Brantford Cambridge has always been a good rivalry, no matter who's sitting where in the standings at this level. So, uh, no, and again, our guys, our guys are trying out every game the rest of the way through. They're on a tryout for you know what they're going to do next year, whether it be here or at another level or in another town. So, you know, we're just looking forward to you know winning every. If we win every shift, we win the hockey game. Thanks for doing this, Scott. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the Wayne Gretzky Sports Center, third period. Just about underway here. 3 2, the visiting Cambridge Winterhawks with the lead. Right off the faceoff, Brantford controlled, fire the puck in the zone. Back to pick it up there, Zip Manis for Cambridge. Plays it ahead for Bilton, skates through center, fires it in the right wing corner. Ferris skates back to pick it up for Brantford, backhands the puck up the boards. Penn Warden couldn't get it out. Slap back in, but high into the meshing. First stoppage of play in the third period, 26 seconds in. Well, Cambridge holding a 3-2 to two lead after two periods, and when leading after two periods this year, the Cambridge Winterhawks 10-0-4. So no regulation losses when leading after two, which means that they can hold down the fort defensively and also hold the lead when it matters most. Here's Van Loying playing the puck ahead. Polilo gets it for Brantford. He out there with Bastian and Ney. Ney picks the puck off the boards lately, breaks down the right side, snaps one off the crossbar. Good shot by Ney, but he couldn't get it by. The crossbar bounced out to the blue line. Kept in now by Brantford. More pressure here from their big line of Bastian, Ney, and Polilo. Back the other way comes Bilton for Cambridge. Got one man to beat. Bilton stripped off his stick by Polilo. Polito back pedals, then plays it ahead. Out through center. Here comes Zemenko. He lost the puck. Good back check there by Gratton. Puck is loose. Here's Ney again with a chance. Fires it right on. Blockered are kicked off into the corner. And shot around the boards there by Camacho. Puck comes out to the blue line. Michaelis steals it from Hartholt. Michaelis tried to feed it across there for his forward partner, Shell. It never made it through. Here's Shell now with a shot. It bounces out to the blue line. So Mann has to get it, that neutral ice, plays it in, and it's picked up there by Van Loyen, tipped off into the corner by Camacho. Slapped up the right side, Cambridge will come back. Fed ahead to Michaelis. Inside the zone. Now in behind the net. 
Quick shot from the slot. That was blocked, and Brantford comes back the other way. Huck gets down and covers that puck up. Pawson with a good offensive chance. Just a few seconds ago, not being able to get that puck through, and Brantford goes the other way. And Huck stands to his feet once again. And like we said in the second period, he's looked solid his last two hockey games in beating Kitchener and Waterloo. And facing this Brantford team, even though they were outshot after the first period, 12 to eight, really kept it together. And I believe that Huck's a big difference maker on why his team's holding a three to two lead here. Waterloo native, just about got beat early on by the shot from Nay, but it hit the crossbar and off the faceoff, Cambridge control the play. Fire the puck up the wing, goes by the winger chard down into Brantford's territory. Ferris is back to get it. Here's Penn Warden with a chance to get it out. Back hands it out to the blue line, but not out. Here's Ferris for Brantford. Check closely there by Jordan Chard. Centering pass, Lamontang couldn't get a shot away. Here's Lamontang with a quick shot. And Curie with his another good save. Lamontang didn't seem to get everything on that, but it was still enough, and the goaltender had to be sharp getting his glove on it. Yeah, and for a save like that, that's not the easiest save to make by Kiri when Lamontang's in front of the net like that. One time you're expecting it to snap it on net with a lot of force, but he sort of fanned on that puck, and Kiri still stuck with it, watched it all the way, and was able to cover up with no rebound. In my mind, that's a big save, whether he got all of it or not. It's a good job by Kiri to stay with the play. Off the faceoff, Brantford get the puck out to the blue line. Nay plays it ahead for Bastian. Good puck control by Bastian to get into the zone. Bastian puts on the brakes. Lost it momentarily, then gave it up. Got it back, but then gave it away again. And puck is shot out to the blue line. Zemenko, a forward playing defense here in the third period for Scott Rex's Brantford 99ers. He's number 16, former Toronto Junior Canadian. At center. Bastian comes back the other way for Brantford with Palillo and Nay. On the right side behind the net, Bastian protecting that puck. Well, he's hit hard there in behind the net by the big defenseman, Lucas Zitmanis. And the puck shot down the ice. Icing is waved off. Fired up the left side for Palillo. Palillo knocks that down and comes out to center. Plays it ahead. Bastian tips it in and takes another hard hit, this time from Guido. Here's Van Loyen off the backboards for McKay. McKay then puts it back off the backboards. Van Loyen, long lead pass to Hartholt. Subban, only man back. Good defensive play there by Subban to break it up. Hartholt shoots that deflects off a leg off into the corner. Four minutes into the third period, still 3-2 Cambridge. No goals yet in this third. It was 2-1 Brantford after one. And two second period goals by Cambridge, and they still hold that one goal lead. A quarter away into the third period. Here comes Magwood. He scored one of Cambridge's goals in that second period. He lost it at center. Here's Hartholt feeding it across, broken up by Subban. Then he overskates it. And here comes Cambridge back the other way. It's Peters moving in. Peters got by Ferris, but he couldn't get a shot away, and Ferris knocked him down. Magwood behind the net, broken up by Van Loyen. Van Loyen then sent flying there. Good body check by Peters, and Brantford gets the puck out to center, knocked down by Witzel, Witzel to Subban, and Witzel gets it right back. Witzel with some speed out of his own end. To the Brantford line, shot blocked. Brantford with a chance to clear now. This is Ferris, out to center on his backhand, gets inside the line and shoots it in. Hawk fanned on that clearing attempt, but it went right to his own defense player there, that was Witzel, and he plays it ahead. Cambridge winner, Hawks come back the other way, Plur to center, to the blue line. Into the zone, snaps it around the boards. Gratton is there first. He wraps it back in behind the net. Picked off there by Pereira for Brantford. Up to Penn Warden. Penn Warden then slaps it off the boards, but it never made it out to center. Now he gets it back, and Fitzpatrick wires one in. Huck out to play it. Witzel for Cambridge. Reverses the puck in behind the net for Plourd. Plourd then gives it back to Witzel. He feeds it ahead. No, he didn't. He hung on to it. He still has it. And now Witzel, out of his own zone with some room, comes to center to the red line and fires it down. Kire fires it up the left side. 
Briscoe cleared it out but gave it right to the Cambridge defender and it shot right back in. Branford cleared the puck to the blue line and not out. Now it gets out. Good play there by Briscoe to slap it out to center. Cambridge intercept. Flipped out to center. Here's McKay for Branford. Back to his partner Zemenko. He gave it away at center. Mills moves in. Tees it up right on. And Curie will make the save. And the rebound came out there about a foot. But he pounced on it. And the whistle blows. Oh, well, great action back and forth. Can you finally get a chance to take a little bit of a breather here after about four or five minutes of calling hockey there? And, and Cambridge will be uh, happy after this game. Four straight home games after tonight the Winter Hawks have. And... They'll be happy to see their home barn there for the next couple weekends after they've played just about 500 hockey here, the last 10 home and away. Break there for Brantford, broken up by Mills as Ferris tried to hit Nay with a long pass. Nay bashing and Pelilo back out there for Brantford. They're their top offensive line and they have the puck. Here's Pelilo trying to jam one in. And went off the pad into the slot. Picked up there by Lamont Tang. He comes back for Cambridge. Seven minutes gone in the third period, still 2-1. Lamont Tang, there's a quick shot. And the goaltender, Curie, just got his pad on it. Dangerous shot from Lamont Tang. He's got a good hard shot. He opened up the scoring back in the first period for Cambridge. Nade in the blue line and in. Plays it off the backboard, bounces out to Subban in front of his own net. He now swings in behind the net. Oh, a penalty coming up here. Don't agree with that call at all. Bastion never even touched Subban. He just fell. And a hooking penalty coming up here to Bastion, so Cambridge goes to the power play. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you on that play. And Subban in the midst of falling, and when he tried to regain his balance, he tried to shoot the puck at the same time and then fell. So Cambridge getting away with one right there still should be five on five hockey at this point. And Nay, who hit the crossbar real early here in the second period, failed to tie the game up. He was the last Brantford 99er to get a game winning goal against Brampton. Off the face off. The puck is loose in the corner. Now goes back to Zitmanis on the point. Plays it across for Mills. He'll swing it behind the net for Shell. Shell then sauces one over here to Pawson. Back on the point Zitmanis. Quick puck movement here by Cambridge but they can't get a good shot on that. There's a weak one and it was on the short side and it almost fooled the goaltender but he was able to stop it off the stick of the Cambridge forward, number 71, Devin Shell. This is a big chance for the Winterhawks to get that two-goal lead that they've been looking for. There's nothing more that the Winterhawks would like more is take a two-goal lead and play with that lead for the next 12 minutes. They've done a good job of keeping the puck out of their net. If they can bear one more, I think they've got a real good chance of winning this hockey game. Semenko for Brantford, lost it. Shell plays it off the boards. Mills has to work hard to keep it in, and he does. Here's Shell with it. Shell flips it down on the corner for Lamontang. Lamontang has it on the boards. Now looks cross ice for Zitmanis. Zitmanis plays it down left wing boards. Shell is in there. Ferris knocked his man. Pawson down. Puck is loose in the corner. Cambridge come up with it. 50 seconds in the power play. Zitmanis cross ice to Mills. Mills snaps one towards it. Puck is loose and they score. Shell picks up the loose puck, put it upstairs, and Cambridge on the power play open up a two-goal lead. Yeah, that's the all-important goal that they were looking for. Shell on the backhand scores his fifth goal of the season. The Cambridge Winterhawks doing a good job of cycling that puck around and burying it to take that two-goal lead. And you know that that one feels good for Mr. Shell. Go the face off at center. Bastian, the penalized player, back out there, and he's out there with Polilo and Ney. Trying to get their team back into it after leading 2 1 after 20. They now find themselves down by two goals. 4 2, just over 11 left in the third. Here's Gratton firing one. That was blocked by Van Loyen. And the puck comes out to center. Polilo races back for Brantford with Bastian. Polilo's long shot kicked aside by Huck. Here's Bilton for Cambridge, over skates it. Back in the point, Van Loyen snaps one well wide of the net. Bounces off the backboards, and Huck will be right there. He'll put his glove on the puck, and the faceoff will be coming up to his left. And the Cambridge Winterhawks, 
with that two goal lead and the way that they've been taking face offs tonight have been real effective. They've been real solid in that area. And when you have that lead, Mr. Huck can hang on to a few more pucks if he feels like he can make a play and maybe feels like the, the smart play would to be to hang on to it. He's got lots of faith in the forwards to win those face offs. Here come the Winterhawks back the other way. Patagone shot. Missed the net by five feet, bounced out to the blue line, kept in momentarily. And Brantford come back the other way. Here's Harthold dumping it in. Cummings goes after it. Here's Subban poking it out to the blue line. Kept in there by McKay neatly. Loose puck picked up by Badagoni, and he's rubbed out of the play neatly by McKay. Ferris plays it off the glass down into the Cambridge zone. Icing is waved off as the defenseman Anthony Guido was back to pick it up. Guido gives it away. Here's Hartholt shooting, and Huck had to be sharp there as the puck was given away by Guido, and Hartholt looking for his second of the night. Had some good chances, another good chance there, but Huck comes out of his net and makes the save. Yeah, Hartholt with just now seven points on the season, is a, and this is 37th game. Looks like a scorer here this evening. His offensive prowl has been great. He has been all over the ice defensively, offensively, and really been a bright spot for Brantford here tonight. Here's Plourd for Cambridge. Fires it across off the stick of Meg, winning down the ice. Icing waved off. Kira is out to play it up the left side. Briscoe can't knock it down. Slapped right back in by Witzel. Goes in behind the Brantford net there to pick it up. Anthony Van Loyen. Good four check here by Magwood. Van Loyen still with the puck. Up the middle. Here's Pereira for Brantford. Briscoe's out front. They gave it away. And it's shot down inside the Brantford zone, and Van Loyen has to hustle back. Swings it across for Zemenko. Zemenko now with it. Still has it. Moves it ahead, but gave it away. Here's Van Loyen for Brantford. Flips it high on his back inside the Cambridge blue line. Nine minutes and five seconds left here. Cambridge with a 4-2 lead over Brantford. Michaelis racing out to center. He's got Pawson with him. Briscoe checking him from behind. Centering pass out of the reach of Pawson, broken up, and Bastian comes back the other way. Feeds it ahead to Briscoe. Briscoe dumps it in and goes after it. Beats Witzel to the puck. Briscoe comes up with it, plays it into Nay. Nay centering it, and it never made it through. He got the centering pass back, and he let a shot go from a sharp angle, but it went out of play. Well, if Brantford's Looking to get back in this hockey game, Plilo has 24 points on home ice this season for the 99ers. If they can get him rolling here in the third period to try to create some offensive opportunities, it'll give Bradford right back in this hockey game. Buck hit the meshing, so it'll remain inside the Cambridge zone off the faceoff. Mills tried to clear it. Plilo to take the draw. Up against Scott Pawson of Cambridge. Cambridge win the face off and come back the other way. Centering pass for Pawson. Here it is. Pawson with a chance. He fell down though. And Brantford come back the other way. Polilo plays it across to Nay. Fitzpatrick up on the play. Polilo on his backhand. Tried to play it out front. Broken up and picked up there by Michaelis for Cambridge. Plays it up the wing. Pawson almost gave it away but out of their own zone come the Winterhawks. Michaelis plays it ahead to Pawson. Pawson back to Michaelis. He couldn't get a stick on it. Fitzpatrick swings it up the right wing boards. And back come the 99ers. Here's Palito to the blue line. Gives off to Nay. Nay then tried to drop it for Bast and he overskates it. And Cambridge break back three on two the other way. Pawson to Michaelis. Michaelis moving in, gave it away. Good shot there by Pinder, never made it through. And Brantford come back to center. Subban with it, plays it ahead. Out to play it is Kire. He'll leave there for his defense partner, his defenseman there, Nathan Ferris. Ferris out of his own zen, rushes the puck through center. Down the left wing boards. Guido steps up and hits him hard. Puck loose. Here's Chard for Cambridge. Ferris slow getting up. Ferris has to hustle back to get it. Moggy right on his tail. Ferris plays it off the wall to Cummins. Cummins now slips it up the middle. Here's Van Loyen joining the rush. Van Loyen, left wing. Leaves it there for Camacho. Camacho centers it. 
Gave it right to Witzel. Witzel still with the puck. Plays it up the right side. At the line and now out to center. Van Loyen shoots it in and hit a Cambridge player along the bench. Stoppage of play, but on the process, a slashing penalty coming up here. I believe it's against the hometown 99ers, so Cambridge with a two-goal lead will go to the power play. Yeah, and Cambridge. Oh, actually, no, it's actually to Cambridge. Charge going to head off here. They opened up the Brantford box. That's why I thought it was Brantford. Yeah, they uh, they threw another puck to the referee there <coughs> to give to him as that looked like that last puck went into play. So yeah, it'll be Brantford going to the power play. And they've got no power play goals here this evening on three or four opportunities. So they'll want to. This gives them a great opportunity to get back in the hockey game. So look for their big guns to be swarming the front of the net. Zemenko with it, right point. Left shot, has it though. Flips it across here for Van Loyen. He now gathers it in, but gave it right to the D Cambridge Winterhawks defenseman Mills, and he'll just shoot it down the ice. 35, 25 seconds gone on the power play. 6.25 left in the period. Cambridge with the puck. Short-handed, here's Moggy, left wing boards. Fires one right on, glove saved by Kiri. He slips it off to Zemenko now, and he'll bring it up to the blue line. Feeds it across to Fitzpatrick, over skates it. Gets it back though. Fitzpatrick with the puck, being pressured by Badagoni. Plays it up there for Zemenko, and it bounced off his skate right to Badagoni for Cambridge. Long pass. Off the stick of Moggy and down into the Brantford zone. Branch with no chances yet in this power play. Just under a minute left in it. Bastian comes to center. Lamont Tang couldn't grab it. Shot back inside the Brantford zone and Ferris will grab it for Brantford. Nathan Ferris flips it across to Bastian. Bastian rink wide. Now Polito gets in the zone. Down the left wing corner. He'll try and set it up. Gave it away. Now here's Nay with a shot. That goes off the backboards and squirts out to center and it's Gratton. Gratton, good angle there by Ferris to break up that play. Nay skates back for Brantford. Gave it away to Lamont Tang. Lamont Tang flips it back to Guido. Guido at his right wing corner down in his own. Got it out to center and Gratton slapped it down the ice. Five minutes left in the period. Time now becoming a factor for the 99ers. They're down by two. And the power play not effective here. Both teams now at full and even strength. Cummins with a long shot right on, and Huck made the easy save. And you can see the Winterhawks really being laid back on that penalty kill. Not a lot of force through the neutral zone like you're used to seeing the Winterhawks. Like we said off the top, eight shorthanded goals on the road this year. They take that off to another level when they're shorthanded with only four guys against five, but right there you saw every time they get the puck, they just clear it down to the end of the ice. One player may have went forward looking for the puck. We saw where there was odd man rushes going the other way shorthanded, and also when they dumped the puck in, there seemed to be two players going after it, cycling instead of just one. Michaelis fires the puck rink wide. Pleur jumps up in the play. Number four for Cambridge has the puck still. Good battle there by Plourd and Pereira. Michaelis in to help out, he picks it up. Here's Michaelis now on the slot on his backhand. Picks up his own rebound and never got a shot away both times. Cross ice feed for Pinder, back on the point now. Witzel lets it go, sails off into the corner. And versus Sammy now, flips it out. Cambridge, come, Brantford come back the other way. Long shoot in there by Fitzpatrick. Plourd, first man back for Cambridge. Gave it away to Camacho. Centering pass, quick shot for Sammy, never made it through. Good chance there for Brantford. But they couldn't get the shot through. Back in the point, Zemenko just hopped over his stick and came out of the zone. Ferris for Brantford. Plays it ahead to Versami, and just offside there, on the left side there was, uh, I think it was Hart Holt. And we'll get a stoppage of play. 3.30 left, Cambridge with a two goal advantage. And Cambridge doing a good job holding off the 99ers right now. You can see the 99ers trying to get something going. They're passing the puck around the outside. They've got numbers, they've got possession. And they seem to get opportunities in front of the net. The Winterhawks are there to block it, or you see a play like that. It just bounces over their stick and out of their zone. 
Right off the faceoff, Brantford with a good scoring chance and Cambridge with a penalty. So Brantford late in this game will get a chance to cut the deficit to one as they head to the power play. I believe the forward for Cambridge, Tyler Peters, heading off for the hook, and that's the call. So we'll see if Brantford can capitalize on this power play. I haven't had much luck on it tonight. No, and, and that's that's the story against Cambridge. Cambridge eighth in the league at penalty kill, 36 power play goals against in 220 times. Brantford handed coming into tonight's game and on the road, it's even better. Road penalty killing, they've only allowed 23 power play goals against on the road this season. Bastian let one rip from the right wing boards, went off the blocker, the uh, goaltender's blocker and hit the mesh. So we get a stoppage of play and face off will probably still be inside the zone. So a uh, minute 42 left in the Brantford power play, just over three minutes in the period. Nay will take the draw for Brantford, Lamont Tang for Cambridge. Brantford win it back in the point. Bastian on the right side for Fitzpatrick. Lays it down low. Cummins back to Fitzpatrick. Cross ice. Bastian, he fanned on that one timer. And Cambridge pick it off and come to center. Here's Moggy killing off some time by putting it back. Who is defenseman? Mills, and he'll wrist one down the ice. Knocked down by Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick swings up the left side. Here's Nay to center. Cross ice to Bastian. Gets inside the zone. Gives it to Palilo. Palilo over skates. The puck is loose. And a shot. I believe the Cambridge player cleared that and shot the puck off in the corner. And Lamontang is back shorthanded. Snapshot. Deflected off into the corner. Palilo pokes it in behind the net for Fitzpatrick. Long pass. Out of the reach of Cummins. Picked off and back the other way comes Cambridge. Here is Gratton, centers it, and went on to the stick of Budagoni, but he couldn't get much on it. Long shot, Kire will hang on to it, and a good job here again by the strong penalty killing of the Cambridge Winterhawks. Brantford not getting many opportunities. No, not many opportunities at all, and if you remember back in the first period, I believe it was David Story going down in the corner. We haven't seen anything of him since he's gone down, it doesn't look like he's returned to the game, and I don't see him down on the bench, so you hope that he's okay from the, nine or nine, from the 99ers' behalf. They only had five defensemen coming into the game, and they, that makes it four. That's why we've seen a lot of defensive play from Lenny Zemenko, number 16 for Brantford. Ferris plays it ahead. Cross ice here for Paris Briscoe, gets inside the zone. Final seconds of the power play. Goaltender is now out for the... 99ers, extra attacker on. Prayer races after it. Good battle in the far wing. Briscoe knocked his man down out front. No call. Puck shot to the line and just dribbles outside the zone. Tapped ahead there by Van Loyen. And it's slapped into the corner. And Brantford with a minute, just over a minute left in the period. Need a couple goals here to tie it up. They're down 4-2. Van Loyen puts it back on the point. And it's shot down the ice. And this will go into the empty net. It's uh, Bodagoni with the goal, and that will seal the deal here for the Cambridge Winterhawks. Yeah, Bodagoni scoring his 13th goal of the year. That went into a wide open cage. No problems there. Maybe get out the brooms to help it along the way. And that one may seal the deal for the Cambridge Winterhawks, who are looking for their 19th win of the season as they want to creep up in the standings. Unfortunately, the team that they're after right now, the Stratford Culletons, have won eight straight games. And with the win tonight, we'll put them just two points behind Stratford, who are absolutely on fire right now. Here's McKay for Brantford. Final minute of the third period, long pass intended for Camacho, never made it to him. Good defensive play there by Mills. He and his partner tonight, Zit Manis, have been out there a lot and they played a strong game. They're out there to finish one up, one off. Here's the youngster, Magwood, dancing out through center, tripped up, still gets the puck, plays it out front, broken up, and back come Brantford. Lead pass here for Camacho. He's got a breakaway. Camacho moving in, shooting, and he shot it high and wide. Back the other way come Cambridge. Play broken up by Fitzpatrick. Final five seconds of this one. 
The Winterhawks fell behind 2-1 after 20. They scored a pair in the second, they score a pair in the third, and they'll skate back to Cambridge with a big win here tonight by a score of 5-2. Ken, tonight we saw the Cambridge Winterhawks come into Brantford, a place where they've won a few times this year and they were looking for another victory and came away with one. What did you see tonight that really changed the game and brought the victory to Cambridge? Well, I thought the penalty kill by Cambridge was real good tonight. Uh, Grattan and uh, uh, Batagoni did a great job up front and uh, a couple defensemen, Mills and um, uh, Witzel were real good back in the blue line. Huck was good in net. And when it was 3-2 for the Winterhawks early in the third period, Nay ripped one off the crossbar, and I thought if they, Brantford could have scored there, we would have had a little closer game. But unfortunately for Brantford, they lose 5-2. And we talked with Scott Rex, the head coach of the Brantford 99ers, before the game here this evening, and he said this is a building stone for the Brantford 99ers. They're a young team, and they really need to learn how to grow as a group. What do you think they take from tonight's game as a positive? Well, I think they, they worked hard. They showed they could play with a, oh, an experienced team, but in the end, the experience did take over. I was really impressed with uh, Nathan Bastian, number 27, for Brantford tonight. And how about uh, the young kid playing for Cambridge, number 10, uh, uh, Zach Magwood. He ended up getting himself a goal. In fact, it was the winning goal tonight. So we got to see some of the younger players perform well here tonight as well. And uh, Huck and Nett, like you said, did a good job. But Lucas Mikulski, who is the number one starter for Cambridge, had a chance to sit on the bench and watch this youngster put on a show tonight. Yeah, Huck was real good, uh, real impressed. He's a big body in there. He uses his pads well. And, you know, the only, the only trouble I think he has is playing the puck, but he's always on the puck, and uh, he sees it no matter where it's coming from. Well, that does it for Ken, myself, Scott Bridge, and the rest of the Rogers crew. We thank you for joining us here tonight from the Wayne Gretzky Sports Complex. Cambridge taking this hockey game 5-2. to two. On behalf of everyone at the Rogers TV crew, good night, everybody.